when rooted in Christ, God gives you three characteristics on how to love. When we make Christ the root of our life, the easier and better it is for us to love. Because when he is your foundation, the root of your life, you look at relationships different and you show love. That you give grace because it was Christ that first gave you grace. That you use your gifts to serve to better the community. That you forgive because it was Christ that first forgave you. And it first starts with Jesus, that Jesus is the source of love. And in order to give love, you have to know love, and that is Jesus. This is the reason why we named our church the Bridge Church. It's because it is us. God wants to use us to connect people to Him. Church, we're so glad you joined us. Come on, let's all stand together. We're gonna sing. It's good to be back together, amen. I was sing this out.
pastor here and when you walked in there should have been a table and on that table there should have been things to tell you about our social distancing and, and all of that so you get a lot of wristbands make sure before you try to high five someone or kick someone in a kneecap you see what their wristband is um, also there is our connect cards and so if you're a guest today man I would love for you to fill that connect card out and then um, at the end of service we'll exit out that way and so there's a bucket that's there. You'll just drop that into the bucket. And then there's a welcome home tent. And if you're a guest, please pick up a mug. I would love for you to take home a free gift. And if you're not a guest, we still love you. And <laughs> there, there is some shirts and swag that's over there that you can look at and would love for you to have. Man, I'm, I'm just thankful for this. You know, we launched our church uh, March 1st. And what an amazing time that was. And uh, we thought everything was going to be great. We're like, man, we've launched this church. Easter's coming. It's going to be even bigger than ever. And then COVID-19 hit. And this is a, that was during a time where we thought, man, things are just going to be terrible. Like, God, we've done all this hard work. Like, what, what's going to happen? But I just found myself drawing closer and closer and closer to him. And we've been able to stream online and do awesome things like that. And so, man, can we get a, give a big clap for the Lord? Because, man, he provides. He really does. And he provided for us to continue to be present in this community so that we can continue to point people to Christ. Um, and so, man, I'm so thankful that you're here. And I love you. And I want to just pray with you before we go into our next song. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for this day. Man, we just get to, to gather and see faces and, and high five, air hugs and all of that, Lord. And I'm just so thankful. Kids in here and all, like, Lord, we are just grateful for you. That we just get the opportunity to serve you, sing to you, worship you. Um, Lord, I pray that you just soften the hearts of the people that are here today. That they'll be here to hear a message that shares about your love and how great and how merciful and how forgiving you are, Lord. Help us to hear those things today. God, we love you so much. Thank you for those who are serving the production team, people at the welcome tent, uh, our band. All this is possible without you. So God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See 
And I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Sing me back to where we started.
strengthen. And God, we thank you for that this morning. God, we thank you that there's, there's no height, there's no depth. There's nothing that can keep us from your love, Father. God, we thank you just for the chance to get back together, to gather in your presence. God, I pray that you just open up our hearts. I pray you give us ears to hear, give us eyes to see. God, we thank you for your presence that's here with us this morning. And we just worship you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He can go ahead and be seated. Have you ever um, felt lonely? Like, have you ever been in a position where you just, you just felt lonely? You might have felt lo- alone. Maybe, not, uh, maybe you felt uh, not loved. Maybe you felt empty. Like empty with your friendships, empty in relationships, empty with your friends. Like this sense of loneliness that no one cares about you, that you're unwanted, that you're, you're not needed. I felt this uh, for the first time being here in Fredericksburg. Um, when we moved here, we had started the church. I had never felt lonely before until I moved here. Uh, I think Satan's trying to, trying to get me to move, but I'm staying here forever. This is my home. I'm not leaving. Um, but I could, I could remember, like, people, I have a beautiful daughter, right? And, like, now they get all the attention. And so I could remember, I could remember people would call and say, hey, Chris, how's your daughter doing? And then if you have a beautiful wife, too, like, they'll call and check on her. And so they're like, hey, Chris, how is, how's your wife doing? Or, or how's the ministry going? And no one would ever ask how I'm doing. And so this started to create, like, man, do I really matter? Like, I, I just feel this, this sense of loneliness, and I didn't really know what to really do with that. And so I'm excited to be able to go through this uh, amazing uh, book or this amazing passage that we're going to see in Psalm chapter 25. If you've ever felt unwanted or if you've ever felt unneeded or, or if you've just felt lonely. Uh, the author of, of Psalm 25, is his name is David. And if I can be honest with you, when reading through scripture, um, I see David is just a lonely man. Like he's always lonely. There's always something that's going on in his life. And I think it starts even when he was a shepherd. Uh, David was a shepherd, which means like he, he looked over his flock, he looked over his sheep, he tried to protect them from wolves and from, from bears, Rawr, bears to the kids, adults are like, why are you roaring at me? Uh, lions, like he tried to protect them, but there's always this, this sense of loneliness because he's the only one out there protecting his sheep. And I really do think that's where his loneliness, loneliness uh, might have started. And then you, you get into a time where he doesn't feel wanted by his family. Uh, there's a man named Samuel that's looking for another king because the king was being disobedient in the nation of Israel. And he's overlooked even there. He has, uh, Sam, or David has all his brothers lined up. He's not even there. And um, he, he gets overlooked that way. There's other, other p- uh, passages in scripture where David is just a lonely character in the Bible. And a lot of times your loneliness can lead you to do things that are just not good. I mean, there was a time in David's life where he was really lonely, where he was kind of looking outside his window and he saw something that he liked uh, that he shouldn't have liked, uh, which was his, uh, his, his friend's wife taking a bath. And it's really weird that her name's Bathsheba. And, and he, draws her, he draws her over, tells her to come over. Like in the midst of your loneliness, it can cause you to not do really, really good things. David is a lonely type of dude. And so have you ever felt abandoned like this? Right, there's a, there a time in David's life he was pursued by kings, by people that, that did not like him, and his own nation even pursued him. He felt abandoned. Have you ever felt abandoned? Like, have you ever felt there was nowhere to go? Have you ever felt like there's nobody that cares about you? Have you ever been abandoned by friends? Maybe you're here today and you've been abandoned by your church. Maybe you're here today, you've been abandoned by your spouse, or by your mom, or by your dad, or by your siblings. Have you ever felt alone? I want you to know that we're not made to be alone. We're not made to feel alone. We're not made to to feel lonely. In fact, Genesis 2.18 tells us, it says, it is not good for man to be alone. Like, you're not made to be alone. God doesn't create you to be alone. Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is close. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. So, like, even when you have this, this, this feeling of being abandoned or this, this feeling of being lonely, it tells us that the Lord is close to us. 
He's close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in the spirit. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. And I love this about God. I love this about his character. He says, He will never leave you nor forsake you. Loneliness does not come from God. And all this means is that we have the authority and the power to rebuke it and to remove it. And so today we'll look at Psalm 25 to see what do we do with our loneliness. When we feel lonely, how do we handle that? Do we try to find Bathsheba or do we look of what Psalm 25 tells us to do? And so let's look at that. Psalm 25, your big idea, if you have a, um, your connect card or, or notes or a pen or paper or stuff like that, we give big ideas here. We kind of let you know what the entire passage is about. And so your big idea is going to pop up here on the screen, but it says, um, when praying to God through loneliness, He will remove your loneliness and you will be crowded with his love. When praying to God through loneliness, when going to God, when you feel lonely, when talking to God, when you are lonely, he will remove that loneliness in your life and he will crowd you with his love. And so let's look at it. Let's look at it. Psalm Psalm 25 uh, verses 1 through 6. It says this. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. So when David writes this psalm, he's actually in a cave. And he's being pursued by his nation uh, that he is supposed to be the king over. Uh, His son, his name is Absalom, decides one day, I want to be king. and, And I want the nation of Israel to follow after me. And so he wins them over. And so now you have this sense of feeling that, man, David is abandoned again. Like the nation of Israel is chasing him down again. He doesn't have friends. People seem to have left him, left his corner. He's challenged with with loneliness. But instead of doing um, not good things, instead of turning away from God, separating from God, it says he leans on a relationship that he has with the Lord. Everything in your life can abandon you. There are things in your life that can leave you. There are people in your life that can forsake you. There are people in your life that can distance themselves from you. But I need you to know today, God never will. God will never leave you nor forsake you. There can be challenges like you being overwhelmed. They can cause anxiety. They can make you feel alone. But number one, I want you to write this down. A relationship with God will destroy your loneliness. And he will crowd you with his love. And in these first five verses, David's relationship is mimicked here. And I think it's something that, or or we should mimic this relationship that we see in verses one through five that says this. He starts off and says, uh, you are my God, David says that. Meaning this, I have surrendered my life to you. My life is yours. I'm always with you. I'm always talking with you. I have an actual relationship with you. I can bring you my worries. I can bring you my problems. I can bring you the joys of my life. I keep nothing hidden from you. And then David says, I put my trust in you. He says, I've always trusted you through everything. Like, I don't just give you a little bit. I think there are times in life we only give God a little bit. We don't give him everything. David's like, I'm going to give you everything. Everything is yours. It's like whatever is causing you to be lonely, whoever is causing you to be lonely, you have to put your trust in the one that's going to guide you out of that loneliness. Surrender your life to the one that will never leave you lonely. I think that's what David wants you to know. When challenges arise in people's lives, they tend to separate from God. Don't we do that? Like when there are challenges that come, like we tend to try to separate ourselves from God and try to fall on things that continue to make us empty or or dry or depressed and again, or lonely. Like through challenges, it can't be running to alcohol, right? Because what is that going to make you do? It's going to make you feel more lonely. 
Like if you're lonely already, you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to get drunk. It's going to cause more loneliness in your life. Like if you're lonely, you're like, I'm going to go run to drugs. What is drugs going to do? It's going to cause more loneliness in your life. If you're lonely and you think food can take care of that problem, it can't. It's going to cause loneliness. Work is going to cause loneliness. Going to friends alone will cause loneliness in your life. Shopping. Now, ladies, I know you love shopping, but when you're lonely, don't go shopping. Please, Megan. <laughs> I will love you. <laughs> help you feel not lonely. Uh, that, those things alone can help you feel lonely. And David is screaming, no, no. Like a relationship with God in the midst of your loneliness, he's going to crowd you with his love, with his presence, so that you don't feel lonely, so that you will feel fulfilled and not empty and, and not alone. It's like starting a relationship with Christ where you run to him during challenging times in your life. And David says in verse 4, I'm going to trust you. And so then he says, show me your ways, Lord. Show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. It's like David just wants to sit at the feet of Jesus. You know, when we're lonely, I think we just got to sit at the feet of Jesus. He's the one that's going to surround us with, with his presence. He's the one that's going to show us love and give us love. We need that. We need a, a relationship that pleases God because God wants us to live. He wants us to live a life that is full of freedom and, and purpose and fulfillment. And a lot of times we think God just has these rules, right? Like we think he has these rules and that he just wants to, wants to flex his muscles and he wants to show us who's boss. But man, it's not the God that we serve. The God that we serve, he just wants the best for us. He wants to keep us safe. It's kind of like a seatbelt. We don't know why we wear those things, right, or get tickets for those. But I think it's for our safety, right, for our safety. Or, or Lily James, my daughter, like when she was a kid, she wanted to stick things in sockets. Like we didn't say don't do that to flex our muscles. We said don't do that because we wanted her to be protected. We wanted her to have safety. And that's the same thing we, that God wants for us. He wants us to sit at his feet. This pleases him. He, he wants us to be safety. Like, this pleases him. He wants us to be crowded by his love during dark and loneliness in our lives. That pleases him. And my hope for you today is what he says in verse 5. For you are God my Savior. That would be my hope for everyone in here. Is that you would make God your Savior. And your hope would be in him all the day long. Number one, again, a relationship with God will destroy your loneliness and crowd you with his love. Only God can provide you true comfort. Only God will never leave you. Only God will never abandon you. Only God will never forsaken you. Only God will help you to feel true to your worth. And that's through having a relationship with him. And out of this relationship, it should involve worship. And that's what we're going to see in these next passages that we'll break down. So number two, I want you to write this down. Worshiping God, not just having a relationship with him. I know people that have relationships, and they're not really true relationships. They don't really worship God. They don't have a, a true, genuine relationship with him. But number two is this. Worshiping God will destroy your loneliness and crowd you with his love. When worshiping him, you'll see how great God is, and you'll immediately realize that you're not alone. When you're going through loneliness, that if, you, if you would just stop and just worship him, you will be reminded how big and how great he is. And he says, number six, remember. Remember translates to attend to. So he's not saying like, hey, God, remember something. He already knows that God knows all things, that God will never forget anything. He's like, remember, Lord, your great mercy and love. Attend to your great mercy and love. He's saying, God, you're so compassionate. God, you, you care for me. You're merciful. Merciful is to, to forgive um, and, and not get something that you really deserve. He just, he's worshiping God right now. He's like, God, you're so great. You're so awesome. You're so merciful. You're so, you're so loving. There's no one greater than you. And then he goes on. He says, remember, Lord, you are great mercy and love, for they are from old. It's not, this is not a new thing of God's character. 
I, like I, I dislike when people say, man, the God of the Old Testament is so different from the God of the New Testament. That's not true. Like God never changes. He's always been merciful. He's always been loving. He's always been compassionate, even in the Old Testament. And he's like, man, if you may feel lonely, be reminded that you're not alone through bringing your worship to him. That God, when I'm surrounded with your presence, I can't be lonely. When I'm surrounded with you, I have to draw near in the midst of my loneliness. And God being near you, man, it, uh, there's a song by, by Maverick City. Everyone, most people know that that's probably my favorite group, Maverick City. If you haven't heard of Maverick City, go look them up. It's an amazing band, an amazing group. And in this song, he says, uh, you love with no reservations. And when I first heard that, I just started bawling, like that we can serve a God that loves with no reservations. Like him loving us isn't based on what we've done right. Like how awesome is that? Like him loving us isn't based on what we do wrong. That he doesn't even abandon us in the midst of our sin. That God loves us. He wants us to do things right. He wants to care for us. He wants to always be surrounded with us, surrounded near us. And so even through your loneliness, man, you have to draw near him. You have to worship him. Verse 7 says, do not remember the sins of my youth in my rebellious ways. Um, uh, I want you to know that Jesus' death and resurrection wipes away all of our sins. Right there, sometimes like our sins can draw us and make us feel lonely. You know, like when we, when we mess up, we, we, we usually turn back to, if you remember uh, in the garden what Adam and Eve did, they, they went to be lonely, they felt shameful, they felt guilt, they felt disgusted, and they went to go be lonely, but God doesn't want that. And so he, he's worshiping him and saying, man, for, forget, remember, uh, don't remember my sins and my wicked ways. Uh, that's for us saying like, man, Jesus' death and resurrection wipes away all of our sins so that when we do sin, we can always continue to draw close to him because of our relationship relationship that we have. Verse 8, good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners. Again, he's just celebrating God's character here. Verse 9, he guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. So not only does he forgive you, but he walks with you. And that's one of my things that I love about God so much, Right, like he, not only does he forgive us, right? Not only did he die on the cross, resurrect from the grave, forgive us for the things that we've done, but he walks with us. Like he doesn't say, all right, I die for them. I can leave them alone. They can do whatever they want to do. They're, they're good. No, no, he, he wants to teach. He wants to mold. He wants to walk with you. He wants to restore your marriages. He wants to revive your relationships. He wants to put together your broken hearts always. He never wants to leave you alone. He never wants to abandon you. And then verses 10 through 14, he's just dwelling on this relationship. And I just want to read this to you because I just, this is just awesome to me how, how close him and, and God is in the midst of his loneliness. We got to remember David's being pursued at the moment. Like he's being pursued by his own nation. He's abandoned by his own nation and even his own son. And these are the words that he's crying out to God in verse 10 through 14. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. Like no matter what he's going through in life, no matter what challenges that are bringing him in life, he doesn't accredit that to God. He still says God is still so loving and so faithful no matter what. Verse 11, for the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Verse 12, who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They'll spend their days in prosperity. The Lord confines in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. He's just worshiping him. We got to draw near to God when we feel lonely, when we feel afraid, when people have abandoned us, when we feel distant from everyone. Worshiping him. Worshiping isn't just a Sunday thing also. Let me say that. Like a, a lot of times we feel like worshiping is, is just Sunday. We can, we can live how we want to throughout the rest of the week, but then Sunday is a time to worship the Lord. And I totally disagree with that. That worshiping is a everyday thing. In the morning, in the afternoon, at night, you're always worshiping Him. 
Um, and when things are going bad, when things are good, you're always worshiping him. And then I think in the midst of him worshiping him, what we'll find out is this. Number three, he, will, he is captivated by God. And being captivated by God destroys your loneliness and will crowd you with his love. As he ends it in verse 15, he says this. My eyes are ever on the Lord. For only he will release my feet from the snare. When you're lonely, you have this relationship with him. Right? You're worshiping with him. But you also focus on him. You're captivated by him. This relationship with the Lord is filling you up. You don't want to separate. You don't, you don't want to take your eyes off of the Lord and, and focus on other things. You would rather be focused with God and with God alone. He's so focused all through this text. Verse 16, he says, turn to me and be gracious to me for I am lonely. And this is our key verse here. David's lonely. He's asking God to turn to him. He's like, Lord, I'm focused on you. Lord, turn to me. Listen to me. Lord, surround me with your presence in the midst of my loneliness. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. He said, I'm focused on you in my troubles. Verse 18. Look at my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins of the world. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me and do not let me be put to shame for I take refuge in you. David is screaming out, protect me, God. That in my relationship, I can do this. I can ask for your help because I have a relationship with you. And in the midst of my troubles, in the midst of my loneliness, when I do not feel good, when I feel like I should step away, I'm gonna worship you. And I'm never going to distance myself from you. I'm never going to get distracted from other things of this world. I'm going to keep my focus on you. In verse 22, he ends with this, which is my hope and which is what I love for him. He says, deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. Again, David's on the run from Israel and his son. And David's prayer is that Israel be delivered from their sin. How amazing is that? That he still cares so much for the people that are chasing after him. And I think he's able to do that. It's because of his love for God. He knows how much God loves them. And he cares for that nation so much that he's willing to ask God to forgive them for that. So I think that's how our life at the bridge should be. That we are so in love with Christ. We're so in love with God that it begins to start bleeding even our relationship that we have with God. That in the midst of our loneliness, we're beginning to draw close to him, never to separate, never to abandon him, but to always be near him. That's what a life that follows Christ should look. Let's pray. God, thank you so much. Lord, I understand that there are times that we we will feel lonely. There are times that I dislike, that I don't love. It's not a really good feeling. It can get distracting from the things that you want us to do and how you want us to live. God, in our loneliness, help us to know that you're there. That we shouldn't abandon you, but draw close to you. That we should lean on the relationship that we have with you. Or that we would trust in you guiding us. Lord, you're so good. Even when we're not, you're so good. And there may be people that are in this room today that doesn't have a relationship with you and they feel lonely, God. They may feel weighed down. They may feel broken, hurt, lonely. They feel all of that. 
God, remind them that they're not made to be lonely. They're made with a purpose. That we're made with a purpose. Not to be lonely. And so maybe there are people in this room today, you're not a Christian, and you're like, man, I didn't know that I had to, had to deal, do all these things in order for me not to be lonely. And maybe like, I can't even follow the first thing because I don't have a relationship with the Lord anyway. And so maybe you're here today and you're saying, man, I just, maybe I need to give my life to Christ to rid me from loneliness. And maybe you're asking, how do you do that? Like, what does that look like in my life? Well, Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. And it's that simple. That God will help you through your loneliness. God, God will rid you from that. Just having a relationship with him will do that. That you'll never feel abandoned anymore because God will always be there. There's no way that you can feel abandoned because he's there with you, surrounding you with his love and his presence. And so if you're here today and you're saying, Chris, how do I do that? How do I give my life to Christ? Like, what are the words that I need to say? I want you to know it's not the words that, that save you. You can repeat after me. It's not the words that save you, but it's the heart that does. And you would say something like this. I'm a sinner. No, I'm fallen. I'm depraved. I do, I do things wrong all the time. But man, I heard a message. They got to send his son to die on a cross for us so that we can be reconciled with the Father again and no longer have to deal with loneliness because we're not separated from you. And so God, I hear it now. I, I ask you to be the king of my heart and the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
gave your life to Christ. Man, congratulations. Amen. That's awesome. Um, when you walked in, you should have gotten a Connect card. And this is a time to fill that Connect card out. Even if you're not a guest, uh, if you've been coming to the church, uh, coming to the Bridge Church, you're not a guest, all those things, like this is a time that we fill that out. And so uh, you put your name on there and things like that. But on the back, which is really what I'm intrigued about and what I love the most, is how can I pray for you? Um, I, I take these and I pray for these individually because I care for you and I love you and I just want to pray for you, man. Like, I just, just want to pray for you. Um, on here as well, on the back, it says, man, I commit my life to Christ, recommit my life to Christ, I find out about connect groups, all those things. And then there's areas on here that says, want to serve, question mark. Um, at the end of the month, we want to open up Bridge Kids. End of October. I say end of the month. End of October. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. You know, I mean? <laughs> it's like, yeah, just whatever, grab and give my kid, you know, and so uh, I won't be in there. Um, <laughs> so October 25th is where we're going to try to push for that. And so if you want to serve in there, um, put that in there. If, if, even if that's like once a week, uh, twice a week. Uh, Brenda, can you raise your hand? Bridge Kids leader right there. She's like, sign up. Yeah. She's like, sign up four times a week. I would love that. Uh, so if that's you, man, reach out to her, get with her, or put that on your Connect card. Um, also, this is a time that we celebrate God with our giving. And that uh, we give because it is Christ that first gave to us. And it's so awesome that we get to continue to pour and give into the community. We had bingo night, you know, last night. Like, like man, it's so good. This is all because of your giving that we get to do stuff like that. And it's not bingo where people paid for it, right, and then play bingo. But this is free stuff. Like, we give away free stuff all the time, free resources all the time. And so there are uh, four ways to give. That says three ways, which is true. Uh, mail, online, text, or you can also drop it off at the offering bucket. And that's what you will do with your Connect cards that's in the back. Uh, drop those off at the offering bucket. Do not forget, if you're a guest, pick up your mug. Okay, I don't want to have to come hunt you down. Um, and then the last thing, uh, living room sessions this week. Woo, yeah, get up for him. Living room sessions online, so be there for that. Uh, Reignite happens online, so you can be there for that too. Uh, man, I'm so thankful for y'all being here. This is awesome. It was awesome to get to worship with you again. I'm looking forward to next week, and uh, I love y'all so much. And so let me pray and then dismiss us. Um, so if y'all want to stand. God, again, you're so good. And our, our heart, man, we just, we just want to worship you. We just want to worship you, and we're so thankful, even, even uh, to have the kids in the sanctuary. God, you even allow little kids at your feet. So, God, we are so thankful for the opportunity to honor you. God, I pray that this week will be awesome, and that we are reminded what to do with our loneliness, and it is to go to you and nothing else. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Oh. Oh, there's an Oh, yeah, yeah, wait, wait. Sorry. I forgot, I forgot all about that. There's an outro video. Okay, so there's these shirts, like during the time of your loneliness or uh, when you have fear. Um, our uh, videographer put together this awesome video that shares about these awesome shirts. And so uh, if you want to play the video, I think it's going to be on that one. Hey, what's going on Bridge Church? Hey, we are so excited about the launch of our brand new online store. And part of what's on that store is the shirt that I'm wearing right now. 
It's our limited edition Faith Over Fear shirt that we got made specifically for the craziness of this year. Now, what we want you to do is if you order this shirt, this limited edition shirt, take a video of yourself talking about how you've chosen Faith Over Fear during this crazy, scary, uncertain year that we have had. And what we'd love to do is just show people the love of the Bridge Church and show people that we are still the body of Christ. And I'm going to make a video of all those videos of you talking about Faith Over Fear and release it on the Bridge's Facebook page and Instagram and all our social media platforms and send those videos to the email below. Thank you so much. And again, always be a bridge.